The following game features explicit language. Viewer discretion is advised. It's three fucked up. It's three fucked up. It's three fucked up. Hmm. It appears as if the train has rattled open our inventory. Hell of a start to this part of the trilogy. After all, we are a different character now. We're the doctor dude. And the wicked shall hold their tongues. So it sounds like the doctor snorts up a rail, then he says something peculiar. Or he's just reading a line out of the book, the pulp novel that Alex gave him. So anywho, he's awake now. So let's wander around the train and try to figure out what the hell we need to do to progress in this game. But first things first, let's get this guy's name by finding his identification card in his carry-on. What do we have here, then? Wallet. Yes. Dr. Lang, curator of the Krennicon Thames Museum. That's me, all right. So now that we know this character's name, we can start to learn about his motivations. In particular, this man wants a drink. Let's go stir up a drink or two. Maybe something strong is in order. Clear the head. So we got the character's name, we got his motivation. All we need now is a reason for him to be on this train. Okay, I'm Dr. Harold Lang. My destination is Augur Peak Island. I'm on this train to... <coughs> I'm, I'm going to evaluate some finds. They called me to... I guess that's supposed to remain a mystery. Although it kind of seems almost as if the voice actor was struggling through his lines there, like he was dropping the papers as he was reading them. But sarcasm aside, let's talk to the first character we meet. Surely he'll have some important information about how to get a drink on a train. Good evening, my friend. I was wondering if you could... Ah, yes. I've seen you poking around. Having trouble settling down, are we? <laughs> Something like that. Could do with a stiff drink about now? Right you are, then. Right you are, then. I guess that's how this guy says goodbye? Yeah, it just seemed like the conversation stopped abruptly there. So, um, I guess I should just keep wandering around the train. Hopefully I can find a mini-fridge with some mini-bottles in it. Locked? Isn't this the way out? Okay, so this is like an escape the room puzzle. Surely it won't be as simple as just talking to the guy and he'll give us the key. Can give you the key, though. On one condition. Oh, please don't tell me he's gonna ask me to solve some ridiculous conundrum of his. Ah, looks like the game's getting a bit meta. Bring me back a shot of whiskey when you get back. Old Floyd will hook you up. Just tell him it's for done. Well, we got a clear quest now. Go see Floyd and get some booze. Seems really straightforward. I can't imagine any shenanigans ensuing with this simple quest. Locked. No good. I can't even get the key in. Well, this door's locked too. I'm beginning to sense a theme developing here, so I guess I should go ahead and talk to the only character I can talk to, because quite honestly, there's nothing else we can do. The restaurant is locked. This key's no good. Ah. Floyd must be getting things ready. Just take your time, boy. Let him do his thing. He'll unlock it when he's good and ready. There's no rush, is there? Uh-huh, yeah, about that. Anyway, with nothing to do, I just kept winding around the train until I encountered an obviously open door, and then I walked through it, because, well, it's an obviously open door and I have nothing better to do, so why not? Hello there. I'm sorry for the intrusion. I was just... Australian accents are kind of hard to understand. Anywho, this guy speaks no English and is clearly a member of some Lovecraftian horror cult that has caused him to be a weird. Although our doctor appears to be pretty chill about this whole situation, perhaps it's because he's already a bit drunk. He doesn't seem to be able to open his mouth properly. I think I'd better leave. Maybe I should mention this to that ticket inspector. Well, that's just a clear case of signposting there now, isn't it? Okay, it should be pretty evident what we're doing in this chapter or part of the trilogy. We're just wandering till we hit a wall, then we go back to the conductor, and then the wall unlocks, and then we hit another wall, and yeah, rinse and repeat. 
correct, just like it says on the back of my shampoo bottle. There's a man in one of the rooms in the next carriage. I don't think he's at all well. <laughs> we get some right crazies on the train sometimes, I'm telling you. You learn to leave them be after a while. The, the wretched man can barely speak. Aye, and I'd be the same way after the amount of booze most of these boys have had. Oh, come on, game. Who you fooling? We all know that guy wasn't drunk. Well, maybe it was, but still, he was a part of a Lovecraftian death cult that's going to unleash a horror upon the world that's probably going to have a lot of tentacles. Still, the conductor dude tells us the bar's not open because he has a psychic link to booze, I suppose. But he does give us what to do next. Hey, saw one of your fellow passengers pop their head at the room at the end of the corridor. Maybe you'd get a better conversation out of her. Pretty little thing, so she was. Thanks. Um, are you sure that she was... <laughs> Well, that's one way to abruptly end a conversation. I guess we're done dealing with the conductor for the time being. So let's go find Alex now. At least, I think that's what we're supposed to do. Well, this was the right room. Hello? A pile of paper dogs. They're not very well made. <laughs> As a child, I used to make origami like this. Where's the girl that ticket collector claims to have seen? I'm... Mm, I'm sure she won't miss just one. Could she be... Nothing. But that sounded awfully like a door unlocking in the next carriage. Is Floyd ready for business? My god, this man must have dog-like hearing. So, yeah, let's go get some booze at last. Good evening. Floyd, is it? Pretty sure the guy's name's Abe. Ah, Mr. Lang, how nice of you to join us. It's Dr. Lang, actually. But, uh, who needs formalities in a place like this? <laughs> Quite. I suppose you're here on business? Business? I, uh... A drink, Mr. Lang, that is what you're after, is it not? Damn, Abe is a pushy bartender. Maybe he has some quota to meet and he's nervous because there's only four people on this train and that's not gonna make it. I'd better not stay. Your ticket collector, Don, I think it was, has tasked me with procuring him a glass of whiskey. Ah, yes, he did leave his hip flask here thinking about it. It's right there on the bar. This one's on the house, Mr. Lang. So yeah, we just pick up the flask, go to the conductor, and everything's hunkered door and we make it to the island with no problems at all. <laughs> no, that's not gonna happen. You see, we're gonna have to reveal some dark secrets about this doctor before we can actually progress any further on. Because this is psychological horror, and this is a psychological part. Better hit me with another. Excess is the path to ruin, Mr. Lang. We wouldn't want you to go before your time, would we? I think I can manage just one more drink. That's what they all say, isn't it, Mr. Lang? Just one more for the road? I can handle it. Never had difficulty driving before. Yeah, who didn't see this coming? Character mentions alcohol. Turns out there's some tragedy associated with him drinking too much booze. God damn, Floyd. You always were a preachy son of a bitch, weren't you? I think you're quite mistaken, Mr. Lang. We've never met you and I. I just don't want you to do yourself an injury. I can handle one more goddamn drink, you stupid bitch. Yeah, the doctor may have had one too many, because things are escalating here pretty rapidly. Just stay out of my way, and I'll stay out of yours. That's right, Mr. Lang, let it all out. There's a good little puppy. What the hell? What did... <sighs> I need to go, Floyd. It's been a pleasure, as always. Aren't you forgetting your promise, Mr. Lang? Whiskey. For Don. That was pretty weird, but the strangeness isn't done quite yet. What the hell is happening to me? Oh, my head. I can't think. <laughs> oh, Mr. Lang, that pale man you met, I think he just wants a best friend. Perhaps you're not quite what he's looking for? You are, after all, blind drunk. Is it really a bad thing not to be friends with a crazy Lovecraftian cultist? But still, we should confront him about it, because nobody should not want to be our friend, goddammit. Worth a try, I suppose. Hey, sir, this isn't quite man's best friend, but... 
Hey, yeah, it's kind of like we had an inventory puzzle there. And speaking of puzzles, there was one before this, where we had to figure out our pin number, but it's just pretty much look at the only set of numbers you have, and yeah, it's the pin. Not really worth talking about, but I just did that. That seems to have done the trick. I think he wants me to open it. There's an engraving here. And there's also kind of a puzzle here. Basically all we need to do is click on the only thing we can click on, and eventually this box unlocks. Ah, it's open. Oh! The box is filled with earth and worms. They're everywhere. Why would he lock something like this away? What, would you prefer that he just has the worms out there in the open? That's crazy, Doc. Nevertheless, after seeing the box of worms, our character seems remarkably chill about everything. He must have the memory of a goldfish. But speaking of memory, I remember that I need to give the booze to Dawn and complete the main quest. Oh, boy, you really came through for an old man. Talk about dramatizing it. You can't be any older than 35. Oh, god damn it. Our character's gone banana pants crazy. That reminds me. I never did find that girl in this carriage. Gettle? What are you talking about? There's no Gettle on this train. Okay now, it appears that the whole goddamn world's gone banana pants crazy. I guess the psychological horror is really ramping up now. You know what I need on a night like this? A good book. Can't beat a good novel and a drink. A good book, eh? So the conductor's just informed the doctor that his memories are faulty and that the whole universe around him is not what he thinks it is. But still, he's gonna find him the book because that's a completely normal reaction. Oh, he's asleep again, and he's exploded key items all over the ground for some reason. Well, it's an adventure game. Let's pick him up and figure out where the hell we can use him. More photos of that girl from the picture in the corridor. She's sitting in different seats around a house. What is it about these pictures? My god! They're Victorian death pictures! I thought as much. I can't take this. What the hell is this place? Am I even awake? I... <sighs> Things are getting really weird now. Can we connect the dots? Why are there Victorian death pictures of Alex? What the hell's up with this train? Where is everybody? Why is the conductor now luggage? I don't want to. I don't want to see. Oh, God, get me out of this place. What have I done? Well, you may have dropped some LSD or something pretty hardcore, man, because you appear to be tripping balls. For real. Shit's not done getting weird around here. This can't be here for no reason. Well, it could be. Just saying, it's not outside the realm of possibilities. But I forgot, this is an adventure game, so of course there's some crucial item hidden inside of it. There. It came apart. There's some kind of thin key inside. Which just so happens they open up the bar. Yeah, let's go on a bender now because shit is fucked up and we need a drink. Oh, well, everything's all rotten and gross now. Yeah, that can't be a good sign. This looks years old. How is this even possible? Well, it's a horror game and anything's really possible. But yeah, we're pretty much screwed. That should be obvious now. We're on a train that seems to be running for eternity. Years have passed, everything's rotten and gross and kind of horrific, I suppose. Yeah, this isn't going to end well for our dear Dr. Booze a lot, is it? I'll just slide it open. No. No. Dear God, what is this? Yeah, as I said, it's not gonna end well. Earth. Nothing but Earth pressed tight against the window. This can't have just happened. This can't be happening. Well, it may or may not be happening. We don't really know what the hell is going on. But that dirt does seem rather real. I can't breathe. There's no air. <coughs> Katrina. Please. Forgive me. It's three fucked up. It's three fucked up. 
So Dr. Boozington is now baggage, which I guess means he's dead, or maybe not. Perhaps the baggage is symbolic of his emotional baggage, and he has now left it on the train. So maybe this is really a healing train that takes your emotional baggage, leaves it on the train, then encases the train in dirt so you can never get to it again. Huh, I don't know if I'm right about that or not. But what I do know is that that's the end of that chapter, or part of the trilogy. So that leaves me with only one more left. Exhale. And I'll be sure to pick that up right after I make it. So thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. See you next time, hopefully. Subscribe! Uh...